Hi everyone, today I'm making a variety of recipes using the protein sparing modified fast egg white bread recipe. I'll be making pizza muffins, cinnamon loaf, bread loaf, and hopefully if I have enough batter, I'm going to make some hot dog and cheese muffins. Yes, I said hot dog and cheese muffins. <laughs> I'm Anita from ketogenicwoman.com and this is my new partner. <laughs> this is my new mixer. I finally got it, so I'll be using that in today's video. Okay, so uh, I have my new mixer. I'm really excited about it and I am going to be making a variety of things, like I said. So um, the recipes are all down below. So I'm going to make the pizza muffins that uh, I have a video for that already and I will link that below. Um, I'm making Janet Greta's cinnamon bread, which uh, I made a loaf this morning and it was so good, it was to die for. So I'm going to make that again um, because I wanna have a few things in the fridge and the freezer for the next few days. And so I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make her cinnamon loaf again the pizza muffins. I'm going to make a, just a regular bread loaf. So I'm using two small loaf pans. And I'm, if I have enough batter, which I think I will, I'm going to make some hot dog and cheddar cheese type muffins, um, which I haven't made before, but it sounded really good. So I'm gonna do that. And I think that'll probably uh, take up all this batter. Um, I'm going to link Janet Greta's cinnamon bread recipe down below it's amazing you have to try it and uh, this one there's no recipe or the other one there's no recipe for because uh, I'm just making it up as I go here today so um, thank you to uh, Maria Emmerich for the protein sparing modified fast egg white bread which generates all of these great things for uh, those of you who are doing the protein sparing days in your in your keto life so I'm well, I will link uh, hers down below as well so let's get started I've got 12 egg whites in here normally I just use the carton eggs um, because I really hate separating egg whites and I took one out of the freezer and it's still frozen. <laughs> so uh, separating eggs it is. So I'm going to dump my 12 egg whites. It appears to be about one and two thirds of a cup of liquid. So you have to make sure your bowl is clean and dry. And uh, I saw a drop of water down there, which I have gotten rid of. So there's the egg whites. I am going to put in a half a teaspoon, no, a whole teaspoon. See, I'm used to making only half a recipe every time because I had those little electric beaters, which were great. I mean, talk about uh, working overtime. I've had those, I think, for 40 years. It's about time I got something new, don't you think? So there we go, teaspoon of cream of tartar. I need my wire whip. I'm going to put the wire whip on. If I appear a little bit fumbly and nervous, it's because this is my first day on this thing. And so I don't really know what I'm doing, but it seems to be okay. So there we go. I'm gonna let this go. I'm not sure how long it'll take. I'll just let it go until it looks right. Plug it in. There we go. Okay, so while this thing is mixing together, um, whipping up, uh, I'm going to tell you what I have uh, in the other ingredients for the bread. And I've mixed it all together. That's a tip I got from Janet Greta's uh, video. Uh, she mixes everything together and then puts it all in at the end. So I thought I'd give that a try today. In this bowl, I have one tablespoon of nutritional yeast. I really find that it just gives that extra little bit of flavor to the bread. I have four tablespoons of allulose, two thirds of a cup of the egg white protein powder. So that's 
all mixed together. I have left out the xanthan gum this time. I just want to see how it turns out without it. I, I kind of don't think I need it. Um, so so that's, that's what's going to go in at the end. So speaking about allulose, uh, I have a couple of things that I wanted to let you know about that. So one is that this morning I was watching a video by Indigo Nilly where she baked two loaves of bread, one with the allulose and one without. Um, so I'm going to link that video below because it's excellent and she goes through what the properties of allulose are and you can really see the difference between the two loaves. Yes, you can absolutely do all this without allulose. But just check out that video because um, I, I mean I've decided I'm going to start using allulose for all the breads now. However, I'm Canadian. Allulose is extremely hard to find in Canada. and I used to be able to get it no problem on Amazon.ca. Uh, I paid a premium price for it, I, I know that. Um, but the last time I got it, I waited a whole month for this tiny little bag. It's an eight ounce bag. I paid 20 bucks and waited a month for it. So just not impressed. So I started to look. So I have uh, a link down below. Uh, Americans can use, anybody can use the link, but this is of special interest to Canadians because, you know, you have such limited choices. There is a Canadian distributor, it's from Wholesome Yum, and they have given me a discount code to give to you guys because they know that I have a Canadian audience here on YouTube. The code is Ketogenic Woman. You will get a 10% discount. Now, I did have to order, like I placed my order yesterday, I did have to order $50 worth of goods to get free shipping. If you don't care about free shipping, then whatever, get a bag of allulose. It'll still be cheaper than that $20 bag I got. Um, but what I did is I ordered some brown sugar allulose mix, which I thought was interesting. I ordered some maple syrup and a couple other things. So I've got a big order coming and I got free shipping. So uh, yeah, check out that link below and uh, see if there's anything there that you like. I am going to put some of the dry ingredients in now. Actually, I'm going to put them all in. I'm going to start, I'm just going to stir this. So I think that looks pretty good. This is so exciting. Look at that. Okay. So this is pretty much how I make all the breads, except for I was using the old beaters. The only thing I did different just in this recipe is I, have, I didn't put any xanthan gum in. I was putting in the xanthan gum, but I don't know if it needs it or not. So I, I guess I guess we'll find out. Thought I'd experiment on camera, why not? <laughs> all right, well, that's probably all I'm gonna get out of those little beaters. So let's see if I've got enough to do everything I wanna do here. I'm gonna start with the loaf. My oven is uh, heating up. I've set it to 325. So I'm going to start putting some of this in here. I'm basically going to uh, put a layer in the bottom of this loaf. Um, this is Janet Greta's cinnamon bread recipe. And she makes these layers and uh, I've already mixed up. There's four tablespoons of brown sugar swerve in here. Plus I just took the cinnamon shaker and shook it until it looked right. Um, Janet Greta likes lots of cinnamon. <laughs> I don't think I used as much as what she had, but 
everybody just, you know, to eat your own, whatever you like. So I'm going to put some of that in here. I had some of this this morning for breakfast. It was worth making again, trust me. Okay. I think I'm going to do uh, three layers. So I am going to put the last of my cinnamon brown sugar mixture on. Maybe she's right. Maybe I didn't get enough cinnamon there. Okay, Janet Greta, you win. And then she just kind of schmooshes it in there. There's that word again. Schmoosh seems to have a multitude of meanings with cooking. Anyways, this is so good. Okay, so there's loaf number one. And then I'm going to make this little mini loaf. What I really need is my bigger spatula. There's my small loaf number two. So I don't know if I'm going to have enough for 12. I might do three and three. So we'll just see how it goes. Let's uh, get the bottoms in. So if you put, oh, there's my oven already. If you just put a glop in each of these. Okay, now I'm going to flatten it out a bit. I'm making a little well. So these recipes are gonna be below. I know that I'm not really talking a lot about the ingredients um, because these are all recipes that you're gonna get. I have enough for the tops, I think. So I've got some cheese and some turkey pepperoni and a little bit of rouse sauce here. These recipes are all good for protein sparing. I'm going to uh, just put a little bit of this sauce. Probably not even a tablespoon per, I would say this is a couple of teaspoons because I'm not really measuring properly here, but then I'm just going to kind of spread it out a little bit. So I'm going to make three pizza muffins and three hot dog cheese muffins. That's my compromise. I really wanted six of each, but I think I was a little short on the egg whites. Whoops, <laughs> so then I went, okay, I'm doing, I'm doing four pizza muffins and two hot dog muffins. Sometimes I just keep going. So these are um, like a turkey dog and uh, so they're lower in, in fat and the ingredients were actually, I think there was only four or five ingredients. I can't remember what they are, but just find the cleanest ones you can find. Some of the butchers sell hot dogs that they make themselves on site. So those are nice. And this is a mix of low fat uh, cheddar and uh, the low fat mozzarella. Now I'm going to put a little cap on each one and then I will smooth that out. I have too many spoons in here. I'm gonna move some of these out of the way. Okay, so that's about that. Okay, so now I need to flatten this just a little bit. You don't have to cover all the cheese and pepperoni perfectly. It actually looks kind of yummy when it's sticking out a bit. Who doesn't want to eat something with cheese oozing out of it? There, these are gonna look pretty.
Okay, and just for a little extra kick, I'm going to put on a little bit of more nutritional yeast, which does have a cheesy flavor to it. So it adds some cheese flavor without extra, too much extra in, in fat or calories or whatever. These are gonna be fantastic. Okay, so these are going in the oven. Everything I think is gonna take about 30 minutes, but I'm going to keep a good eye on it. So I'm going to check that at 25 minutes just to see where we're at. Um, when those pizza buns are ready, I'm going to pull them out. They don't need to rest in the oven. They can just come right out. The loaves, I'll let them rest for 10 minutes or so with the oven off. So we'll see you back here in a while. Today I got, well, today I'm opening the new mixer. I actually have had this sitting on the counter for four days, <laughs> but it has been the craziest of weeks. Five quarts, tilt head design. Oh yay, I wasn't sure if I had that or not. Makes up to nine dozen cookies. I tell them I cheated and got help. Here it is. It is heavy and it's fancy. I can't even lug it two inches across my counter. I feel like this was a big fail. <laughs> okay, just the buns are coming out. But I've turned... Oh, look at these buns. So I've taken the buns out. They're done. They don't need to rest in there. The loaves, I are, I'm leaving in there. Um, for 10 or 15 minutes and then I'll take them out. So while we're waiting for those, look at these buns. They look great. We'll let them cool down a minute and, uh, and then I'll put them out and cut them and show you what they look like. All right, these are coming out. Loaf number one and loaf number two. So this is the cinnamon loaf and this one's the plain one. They need to cool a bit more. So we'll just set them aside. And in the meantime, I'm going to take out the pizza muffins. All right, these should be ready to come out. Still a bit warm on the bottom. I should probably let them cool a bit, a bit longer. They really do come out easier if you let them cool, but it's good to show them what happens too. Okay. These have had a few more minutes. Yeah, it's amazing what a difference a few minutes makes. Okay, so that's basically how they should come out. Came right out nicely. These are the two hot dog ones, which I haven't made before, but they should be the same. Left a little bit behind there. Right, I'm gonna put that one on a plate, cut it in half, see what it looks like. Okay, so we've got uh, cheese and hot dogs. Yum. I think I'll make some uh, hot dog buns with the hot dogs built inside next time, maybe. I, I have to try this. Mm. Super good. Kids are going to love these. Kids of all ages are going to love these. So we just need a few more minutes for the bread to cool. 
And uh, while I'm waiting, I think I might uh, demolish this one. Okay, so I'm going to take a look at this one. I mean, what happens as it cools is you can just see it pulling away from the silicon pan. Uh, this one is pulling away nicely. Now, I don't know what, when I took it out of the oven, the pan was like that. So I don't know if, it, if I squished it as I was putting it in, but you can see it's got like that's, this one didn't do that. This one is still normal looking, but uh, that one went a little funny on me. That's okay. I think it's still gonna taste good. So there, yeah, just does come out nicely most of the time. Sometimes it sticks and I, I don't, I don't know what the rhyme or the reason for it is, but that one came out very nice. And uh, this one's pulling away from the sides too. Very nice. I don't know why they both kind of uh, caved in on the corner. Maybe I did something. This one, of course, is browner because it's got all the cinnamon in it and the brown sugar. Okay, I'm just going to cut a little bit off so you can see the texture. And then I'm gonna wait for it to cool completely before I cut the rest. But yeah, so if you look at that, it is bread. The thing that I like about the allulose, and I know you can use other sweeteners, but I find that it does make a chewier crust like the like actual bread. It's never gonna taste, you know, exactly like bread. But if you're craving a ham sandwich or something, um, you know, this, this is a pretty good substitute. Grilled cheese sandwich, it's great for that. Um, anything like that. If your bread fails, I've got a few bread pudding recipes on YouTube that you can use. And it basically involves cutting, you know, tearing it into pieces and, and just making something out of it with, with eggs and, and other proteins, things. And, and they're actually pretty good. They taste pretty good. So. Um, none of the bread ever goes to waste, but every time I make a loaf, it gets it gets a little better somehow. I, I feel like I'm doing, you know, learning as I go. So I really want to cut this one for you so you can see the magic inside here. So you, you can see that it's got these layers of cinnamon sugar um, and this bread tastes really good. It's got it's got kind of a, a sweet taste because of that. Um, I felt like when I had it, I thought I was eating like a fluffy cinnamon bun. So it's definitely, you definitely wanna check out uh, Janet Greta's recipe, which I'm going to link below. And she's a fellow Canadian too. Um, check out her YouTube channel as well. She's got other cool things on there as well. So. So I am set for a few days with my pizza buns, my bread, and more cinnamon bread. Have a good weekend. We'll see you real soon. Generates all of these great things for uh, those of you who are doing the protein sparing days in your- Makes up to nine dozen cookies. Hmm. Some people around here might be happy about that, but I don't know if I'll be making cookies. Okay, this, I feel like this was a big fail. <laughs> it may have been, but it could be fun. <sighs> Did you just walk into my scene? I was talking. I'm going to have to clean this up.